everyone, how are you doing? Today, I'm back out on another one of my photography adventures, yay! Last week I was in the office and I really don't like being in the office too much, I've got to be honest with you. I like to be outside, enjoying Mother Nature. Now, if you've been following me over the last six weeks, you're going to know that I've been travelling around the Peak District mainly, and I've been you know, trying to capture some nice landscape photos. Today, I'm visiting an absolutely stunning location, which I've never been to before, but I have seen many photos of this, and it looks amazing. It's situated in the Upper Derwent Valley, and the place is called Bamford Edge. Now, I know quite a few of you watching this may already be familiar with this place, because it can draw hikers and photographers from far and wide. Now, the landscape photographers watching this video will know that Mother Nature can be a very cruel mistress. The weather conditions in England can change rapidly, and sometimes that can go in your favour, but other times it can go completely against you. Now, today, so far, it's blue skies, flat blue skies, with pretty much no cloud coverage and it's very hazy so uh, conditions are really not very good at the moment but I'm not going to let that put me off because I'm going to head up to Bamford Edge and hopefully I'm going to get a great picture which I might even be able to put up on my website as a print potentially you're gonna get some shaky footage in today's video, and I really am sorry for this, guys. But it's because I've forgotten my gimbal. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves right now, what the heck is a gimbal? Well, if you've dabbled in the world of videography, you'll know that a gimbal is something that's particularly good at getting steady cinematic style footage. And I usually rely on my gimbal to get my lovely B-roll shots, which basically show you around the landscape that I'm visiting. I haven't got it today, because it's at home. Um, and home is currently uh, about 85 miles in, in a southern direction, where and I don't know where that is, but it's uh, somewhere southern, which I'm just gonna do that over there, and we'll call that southern for now. But yeah, so I'm not going back to get that. You'll be able to understand. Wow. I've literally just got to the top of this hill, and as I've got to the top of this hill, I've just saw what I believe is Stanage. Really is impressive over there. I don't think this 24mm lens is going to do it justice, but it's just a lovely ledge which just works its way off into the distance over there. Imagine it's a great photo opportunity. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on going and head up to Bamford Edge. ago but I've started doing it now since then and it's something which I find really really useful especially when you're coming to a, a new location which you've never visited before I have like a four say it's a four point checklist so the first thing I do is I check the location I check where the location is where you can park and how far the trail is I think this is always good practice because it saves you time when you arrive at the place Number two is I'd like to check where the sun's going to be and this is because the best times of day for shooting, I've said this before but I'll say it again, is sunrise and sunset. So I use an app called Sun Surveyor and it's particularly good at telling you the location of where the sun's going to rise and where it's going to set. And that means I know 
in the landscape where I can set up my composition and I can keep that in mind when I'm taking my photograph. Number three is the weather. Now the weather's always worth checking. You want to be prepared for the weather. You want to make sure you've got the right clothes to wear. You also want to make sure that if your photography gear is not weather sealed, then you've got the appropriate um, materials or items to cover your camera gear up and make sure it doesn't get wet or damaged in any kind of way. Now today's weather is a bit of a surprise because I checked the weather and it was not meant to be this windy. I just really hope you can hear everything I'm saying to be honest with you because the wind is, well it's crazy windy today um, and I wasn't expecting it. Number four, and this is something which is really important to me, I like to check other photographers' photos before I get to the location, and I'll tell you why. I think this is a great idea because you can see the kind of photos they've took, and then what I like to do is try and capture something that's completely unique. Now, I'll give you an example of this. I went to a place called Three Shires, which is in the Peak District, only two weeks ago, and I'd seen so many pictures on Google and different places of the same compositions. Now a lot of these photos were absolutely stunning, they really were, but I just didn't want to capture that same location. I wanted to take a unique composition which was going to enable my picture to stand out from all the other photographers' pictures. So I went there with that in mind. Now fortunately, I managed to get a composition which I'd never seen before. Now it may be out there, but I've certainly never seen it. And that really paid off for me because I put that photograph on Instagram and within two days, two of the biggest sites in the Peak District, Visit Peak District and PeakDistrict.com, both featured my photographs on Instagram to over 100,000 people. And that is just because I took a unique composition. My photo stood out from all the other photos out there and then it got featured. will. I've got to make sure I do this carefully because that wind could just whip me off the edge and then my wife would never see me again and I'm sure she'd be devastated. I hope she'd be devastated anyway. Okay so I'm on the edge or at least one of the edges of Bamford Edge and it's this edge here. Really, it's so windy up here, folks. So it's pretty easy for me to see why this composition over here, just behind me, is so popular. Because it's probably the best composition I've seen so far. You've just got the rock there, just creeping off the edge. And then right below, which you probably can't see from where my camera angle is now, but you've got the beautiful reservoir underneath. So I'm definitely gonna be capturing this photo but I've also got to look for that unique composition which I'm still yet to have found. There really is nothing better than this, you know. Being up on the top of Bamford Edge, looking out at this absolutely incredible view, and there's not one person in sight. But I've got some good news, because I think I've found that unique composition. Take a look at this. Now the sun's quite bright at the moment, so I'm hoping that you can see this all okay. This is obviously uh, the back of my camera on live view. You can see I've got my histogram in place, uh, which is enabling me to see exactly where I'm exposing the image. And at the moment, it's very good because it's up to the right hand side, which is exactly where I want it to be. Now you can also see that I am on F11. You can see that I'm bracketing one stop either side in the middle there and you can also see I'm on ISO 100. Now, as far as the composition is concerned, 
you can see that the foreground interest is this little water feature right here. Just accidentally <laughs> took the picture. But that little water feature right there, which is also known as a puddle. And then you can see the water feature nicely draws your eye, starts off there, and then works up to this rock. And then finally, your eye is dragged through the image all the way onto this beautiful ledge at the top here. I'm really hoping that you can see this all okay. Now sometimes in photography, things can happen which just seem a little bit unfair. So the wind is just that bad up here on Bamford Edge that it's impossible to take a photo. Um, I've had to come down into this little crevice right here to get away from the wind. I've been trying and trying over and over again to get a composition. I haven't been able to get it in focus because the tripod's moving all around and the camera's moving around and it's just not happening. Yeah. 